This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Okay, we've settled down some here at the Ides of March. I've got a great story. Okay. This, um, as I think I might have mentioned on the show before, when I was four years old, I watched Lois Lane on Superman, decided I wanted to be a reporter. Ah. Actually, I just wanted to follow Superman around, but um, <laughs> I... So I, I became a journalist, and uh, I was working for the local paper by the time I was 15 years old. And journalism is one of the ways that women could, um, it was a profession women could break into. Um, and Kansas has such a tradition of journalists, and we've got uh, Clarina Nichols, who covered the um, Wyandotte Constitutional Convention and and wrote back home. We've had a lot of, you know, since the beginning of the state, there's been a lot of women who wrote and uh, did important things and covered important events. And this one is Peggy Hall. Had you ever heard of her? No, I've heard of Peggy of the Flint Hills. And that's um, the one that I had uh, heard of, too. And so Peggy Hall was one that was new to me, but she was actually a war correspondent. And I never did, um, you know, I used to work a lot with Fort Leavenworth, and so I do media training at Fort Leavenworth. And I used to cover, um, back in Mayberry, um, courts and the cops and everything, which is very similar to co- covering the military. And I I loved it, really loved it. And I loved working with the military. I never went overseas as an embedded reporter. I had the opportunity a couple of times, but I just didn't feel like it was the right time to leave. Um, you know, I had, uh, Noel was still at home and, you know, so that just didn't feel like it was the right timing. But I really admire the people who do because that's a, that's that's scary, you know. That's and it's a whole different reality. Mm-hmm. One of the one of the outstanding broadcast journalists in Kansas, and she happened to work for Wren many years ago, Catherine Brandenburg. And I mean, uh, Catherine was kind of like, you know, the first one that would get the question. And, uh-huh. And if she were in the White House press corps now, she would be the first one that they would would talk to. And uh, I mean, she was. She was a, a tough news gatherer, and you could depend on it. If she said it, it was. It wasn't fake news. She she just went out and got and got the news. I long for those golden days of journalism. Yeah. Well, yeah. this you're going to be amazed by the story of Peggy Hall, and I'm thrilled to bring it to you today. Kansas has a distinguished history in journalism. Many of our towns had newspapers before they had buildings. Some of the nation's most respected journalists in all media have hailed from Kansas, from William Allen White in newspaper to Bill Curtis in radio and television and Jim Lehrer of the McNeil Lehrer News Hour on PBS. Among those distinguished ranks is Peggy Hull, the first woman war correspondent accredited by the United States government and the first woman to serve on four battlefronts. She was born Henrietta Eleanor Goodnow, on a farm near Bennington in 1890. Henrietta later changed her name to Peggy Hull. Peggy grew up in Marysville and later moved to Junction City and was a fan of the exploits of investigative reporter Nellie Bly. She started her career setting type at the Junction City Sentinel and got her break covering a fire when no one else was available. She worked for newspapers in Colorado, California, Hawaii, and Minnesota. While reporting for the Cleveland Plain Dealer, In 1916, Hall was assigned to cover the Ohio National Guard in Mexico. The soldiers were dispatched to patrol the Mexican border while Brigadier General John J. Pershing pursued Pancho Villa after his notorious raid in New Mexico. Here, Hall started writing for the El Paso Morning Times, and her reporting of Pershing's return with his men is considered one of the most accurate accounts of the event. In 1917, Hall convinced the Morning Times editor to send her to France to cover World War I. At that time, the War Department did not allow women journalists to become accredited. Hall sailed for Paris without accreditation, but thanks to her acquaintance with General Pershing, she was able to spend a month and a half at an artillery training camp. Envious male reporters saw to it that Hall was recalled to Paris and embittered she returned to the U.S., In the summer of 1918, she finally received accreditation. 
In the following years, she would cover military action from Siberia, Shanghai, and several Pacific islands. Although pleased to have earned accreditation, Hull often complained that she was sent to places far from the front because she was a woman. She may not have been happy with the location of her assignments, but readers valued her perspective and the humanized view she brought to her little stories of war. A soldier writing in 1944 said, You will never realize what those yarns of yours did to this gang. You made them know they were not forgotten. After World War II, Peggy Hall moved to California, where she lived until her death in 1967. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. ValleyVet.com, ValleyVet.com, ValleyVet Supply.